Hi, this is Weekly Reflections, and I'm Nancy Joy. Um, this alignment that I talked about last week, where the five planets are aligning to the Earth right now, has really uh, prof uh, affected me profoundly. They're in my southwest window uh, early morning. Like, say, uh, well, I might get up between 3 and 6 or 5 in there while it's still dark out, and they are very clearly visible, and I'm very mesmerized. I, I almost wake up to see them. I even know when it's cloudy because I don't wake up. <laughs> and um, so I wanted to talk about them this week, and I went online to look and see what astrology had to say, and there's hardly anything other than the um, planetary scientific aspects of it um, listed. And yet I know they are profoundly affecting me. So I found this one. Um, she was an astrologer. Her name is Jennifer Sodini. A uh, spiritual person that helps people, I guess much like me. And she had written something about it, and here's a quote from her. Uh, the five planets aligning in the sky, a unique moment in time, which brings us to yet another reason to gaze and appreciate the sky, but also brings us an interesting intersection of energies. From a spiritual point of view, seeking a lesson, I would say message, in the soul of each planet allows us to reflect deeper and gaze inward as well. And so as I began to explore this further, um, I did go deeper, and I really got a pretty good grip on what's going on in our skies. So uh, the five planets are, um, are Mercury, Mars, uh, Jupiter, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, and Saturn. Um, so it's pretty exciting. It's just gorgeous to see. And as I watched it, as the full moon was going full, Mercury joined. You know, originally they were kind of spread out a little bit, and then one by one by one by one they came into a line. And you can even see Mercury with your naked eye when it's really clear. And they're just there. You know, you can almost see the rings of Saturn. With my binoculars, I could. I could see big, bright Jupiter, and I could see the bright red, fiery Mars and the sparkle of love and Venus. It's just all lined up for us there. And so let's take a quick look on where we're going with this. Any alignment of celestial bodies opens a flow, and it opens a, a flow of energy because, of course, they all have attributes um, and personalities, shall we say, that affect us. So um, let's take a look first, and these are my interpretations. Uh, Mercury is the ruler of communications, very big in my chart and in my third house. Mercury's uh, big time. Um, could you guess, making all the videos? This creates a chance, though, an energy that helps us clear our th throat chakra and say things that maybe we wanted to say and haven't because fear blocks the way. What will someone think? And an even bigger part of this planet lining up with the others gives it more energy for the inner communications. Very clear inner guidance coming through right now, communications from your higher self, your guides, what have you. So listening within is more pronounced. Uh, and, and then we come up, of course, to Venus, the planet of love. And um, to me, <laughs> with the Matcon love revolution going on, he kind of personifies the uh, what this is really about in opening the field to as it aligns with the other planets is to love it all, um, to love everything, even if it feels wrong or bad or whatever. Loving is loving it all. <clears throat> and so Venus is, is lighting up love all over the place, and it's supported by the communications of Mercury. And then as you move on, well, Mars, Mars is the fiery action planet. So Mars is lighting a fire underneath us uh, to expand the love and the communications in the world. Uh, Mer um, Mars, uh, it can bring about a lot of amazing changes, and I do feel that's what's going on. Jupiter's known as the planet of wisdom and good fortune. What could be better than Jupiter hanging out, right? So Jupiter is bringing the wisdom of this alignment and the good fortune that all this increase in love and communications and fire and passion can bring to ourselves and can bring to our planet. And finally, we have what used to be my least favorite planet, but as I understood it very much in my chart over the past few years on the Libra, 
I understand it much better. I watched my husband go through this. He's a Pisces a few years ago where Saturn stays in your chart for quite some time. Saturn is um, the taskmaster, and at times a tough one. Saturn's going to, Saturn's going to insist that you understand. Uh, and it also is called the planet of karma, but if you've followed my blogs, you know I'm not a true believer. I think that karma has been way overused to keep us thinking that we're going to be punished for things and make us feel guilty, and that's not at all what Saturn's about. Saturn uh, holds your feet to that passionate fire there uh, so that you can really get it, so that you can get the good fortune of Jupiter and the wisdom and the communications and the love and the fire being offered to you. Saturn's going to make sure because that's the outermost planet in this alignment and it is creating a, that flow. How I look at this, you know, when planets align, it's like you're driving along listening to something in the radio and you lose, of course this was before all the satellite stuff, but you would lose your channel and static and couldn't get anything and then all of a sudden your, your radio aligns to a signal that comes in clear. That's what an alignment is to me. And what it does is that like, it's like you're in a house and someone's opened all the doors and windows. <laughs> kind of joke thing. Okay, so who opened the door? You're letting in the flies. I mean, it changes things. Or who opened that window? It's so refreshing in here. It changes things. It gives us a chance to clear, to cleanse, to move, to light fires. Uh, alignments are, are really powerful and they're really something. So I was kind of surprised there wasn't much written about it, but um, you know, Saturn kind of has the ending message. I'm, I'm pushing, I'm the wind pushing this fl flow and I'm going to push you into communications. I'm going to push you into your open heart and love. I'm going to push you into the fire of transformation and change so you can bring about more wisdom and good fortune for yourself and for the planet. Uh, to quote an old Star Trekkie, resistance is futile when it comes to Saturn. Go with the flow of the alignment and, um, attack, uh, and connect to the beauty that's being shown to us and the energies uh, that are coming through. Um, so... You can say this is just a beautiful phenomenon in the sky, but it's much more than that. Just gaze at it for a while and you will surely see. Um, it, it moves a flow right into your heart. So enjoy it. It's here till February 20th. It's been here since January 20th. Uh, and it's, ha it's been a decade since this alignment has happened. So catch the magic. Feel the flow of it. And the, me and the messages, those planets and energy, they're opening for you. And next week, February 8th, is the Chinese New Year <coughs> in the fire sign of the monkey. So if the fiery monkey's on its way, and that's going to bring about lots of great things. We can talk more about that. Have a great week. Remember, free mini sessions. And uh, I just had a, a person leave after a wonderful um, two-day retreat here with me. Thank you, Miriam. We had we had a really good time. I made a great new friend. So consider that. Have a great week. Catch the magic. Take care of who you are. I'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.